Good afternoon, conversation three. Um, it is Sunday afternoon, and uh, this is our last topic before we have the midterm exam. Um, as I said in the Zoom meeting, which some people missed because I wasn't um, aware of the difference between Kwamu Kongji and Chal Yoshi. If I'm saying that correctly, I'm probably not. Um, so your midterm schedule is posted. Uh, the Zoom meeting information will be posted soon. Uh, please check it out. I, if you're not watching these lectures, then you're going to have a bit of trouble doing the midterm anyway. Uh, but I've corrected my mistake and uh, the notice should be visible. It should be on the front page, so as soon as you log in, you can't miss it. So if you've been doing your homework uh, and you missed the Zoom meeting, uh, that's okay. Uh, I was just giving everybody uh, specific details about how you would be evaluated and what the plan is. So the plan is to do the topic today, which is Chapter 6, and it will, it will be your sixth um, topic. Unlike the Conversation 1 class, I'm going to ask you uh, just two questions out of six. So your answer should be two or three minutes long, uh, and it'll cover the six chapters of the textbook that we've done so far, or will have done by the time I'm finished this recording today. Um, what else can I say? The midterm review is next week, so next Sunday, I will record a short um, review of the topics and talk about the midterm specifically. And then um, there's one group next Tuesday on the 20th, and then that's week eight. And there's just the review, which will be shorter than usual. And then um, week nine, there'll be the second group. So the class is split in half and half of you will We'll have your midterms on the 20th and the other half on the 27th. And then um, week nine, I will continue um, with the topics. Okay, but week eight, there is no new topic, just um, a video review, just a recording of me talking about what we've covered so far. Now, um, coincidentally, the topic from conversation one and conversation three this week is very similar. So I might end up repeating myself somewhat because the, the question is actually going to be the same. The title is The Good and the Bad, um, and it doesn't say anything about luck in the title, but there is actually um, a bit of content in the middle of the chapter about luck. So on page 70, there's good luck stories. I think there's a helicopter going right over top of us, if you can hear that. <clears throat> I'll try to speak loudly and continue, even though it's going right over the building. Um, on page 72, there is uh, an article, there's a passage called Watch Your Luck. This is unlucky that a helicopter would decide to go over top of the building right when I'm recording and uh, it's a nice day outside, so I have the window open. Apparently that was a mistake. Um, that's unlucky. <clears throat> so when we, when things happen sort of randomly in our life uh, and it, there's no plan and it doesn't seem like it's uh, related to any sort of, you know, um, organized behavior, uh, we can attribute that to luck. We can say, well, the universe just decided uh, that these two things were going to happen at the same time. Professor Sullivan is going to try and record and a helicopter would fly right over his room at the same time. That's what we call luck. So there's two types of luck, of course. There's luck that's helpful and luck that's unhelpful. And we call that good luck or bad luck or lucky, if you're going to use an adjective, lucky or unlucky. So they do talk about objects and animals, and numbers and days, and actions and events. Uh, the, the passage in the textbook separates 
luck into these three categories. So numbers and days, dates, um, actions and events, things that happen, and objects and animals, like lucky things that you carry with you or things that you encounter that are, that are um, living things, which would be animals or plants, stuff like that. Um, so they go into good luck and bad luck from page 68. But the first page, really what they talk about is just a really bad week. And I didn't mention in the Conversation One lecture something that I would like to talk to you about. Usually, um, I do mention to the older students something called Murphy's Law. It's very famous in Korea. Um, you know, a, an intellectual named Murphy uh, came up with this expression of bad luck. Um, whatever, if something bad can happen, it will happen. That's essentially what he describes as um, a bad day. So given the opportunity, bad luck is going to manifest itself. This is incredibly pessimistic, obviously. It's like, uh, if anything bad could happen, it will happen. That's not a very optimistic point of view. Optimistic means you, you have a positive point of view and pessimistic means negative. Um, so you can decide, I will leave it up to you, whether you want to be, um, talk about things in an optimistic way or a pessimistic way. Uh, there's a list here in the questionnaire on page 66, it says, have you ever had one of those weeks? Um, emphasis on those weeks. Uh, it's italicized. Uh, those, one of those days or one of those weeks usually means um, some, some string of bad events, um, usually beyond your control. Uh, it's like that rain cloud that follows the character around and wherever you go, it rains on you. Wherever you move, no matter what you do, um, the rain just drops right on you. The, the rain cloud follows you. Bad luck follows you wherever you go. Th these are all related expressions in English that uh, most people know. It feels like that sometimes, but that's not how things actually work. Um, I'm not very superstitious myself. You may be, um, but I do try not to tempt fate by intentionally, I, I try to avoid the bad luck symbols, just like everybody else, just in case. It's like a backup plan. If, if, <laughs> if the universe actually does have some sort of element of, there's some sort of connection between um, these things that I don't understand, then I'm just going to avoid the bad luck things uh, the way I was um, raised and the way that, um, our culture uh, represents these certain things. So that's one way of talking about this topic is bad luck or good luck, randomness. Um, it feels like things are going wrong and they'll continue to go wrong. Uh, sometimes we use these things in sports as well. I mean, uh, hockey goaltenders are notoriously um, superstitious. They they have certain pre-game rituals. They put on their equipment a certain way every time. Uh, and they associate that with their performance, whether it's true or not. Because in ice hockey, there is more randomness. You can understand how in ice hockey, and I'm from Canada, this is why I'm explaining this. In ice hockey, there's more randomness than there is in basketball. For example, you shoot the ball through the air and either somebody blocks it uh, or it goes unimpeded to the hoop and goes through, depending on your skill. If you shoot accurately, it goes in. If you get free and nobody blocks the path of the ball with their hand, then the ball goes in an arc and it passes through the net and you score points. There's no interference once it leaves the player's hands, unless another player blocks it. However, when you play hockey, people shoot and it hits a stick and a leg 
and an elbow and it changes direction and then it goes past the goalkeeper into the net. In basketball, there's no goalkeeper. So there's nobody in that position of, oh, well, the puck changed direction four times and, and I couldn't react to it. It was impossible. It was bad luck, right? Um, hockey is probably more like that than any other sport I can think of, that there's an element of what we would call luck, where the, a person attempts to do something, but something else happens somewhat randomly, just because of bodies, you know, between uh, the person who's shooting and the person who's trying to protect the net. That's what makes NHL goalkeepers um, superstitious. So they have their rituals and they have their objects and they have their lucky jerseys and their lucky socks and their lucky helmets and everything else um, in order to just attempt to minimize the element of bad luck. So you might feel like you're lucky or unlucky. Um, that's not really gonna be the question in general. Are you a lucky person or not? Some people think they're unlucky. Some people that uh, think they're lucky. That's a matter of perspective though. When you feel like you do things and you work hard and you still don't get rewarded, you feel unlucky. And if you don't do very much and then you get rewarded anyway, even though you're lazy or you didn't um, attempt to get some sort of work done and then you get some reward anyway, then you feel that this is, this is due to luck. Okay? So... That's what one of those days means, that there's a string of bad luck. You're on a cold streak. Um, you can't uh, get anything done right. And uh, as opposed to one of those perfect days where you're uh, on a hot streak, uh, there was a, a television show, a drama, which you're probably not familiar with because you're much younger than me. But about 15 years ago, <clears throat> uh, Charlie Sheen played a character uh, and he expressed um, this situation, this hot streak of like having a day or doing something, a, a sequence of things um, where you can't miss or everything goes really well. He called it winning. And people still say that in English. Um, I'm winning. What, do, what are you winning? You're not playing a game? No, I, I'm winning at life. Uh, things today, everything has gone well, right? I took a test. I did well at the test in the morning. Uh, I got all my work done, I had a good lunch, um, I got a message, you know, I called my mother and my mother has recovered from, um, you know, a bad fall and she's in good condition. Um, just any, it just good news and good events all day um, without fail. Things look like they're turning around for you. That's when you can say, um, I'm winning. Yeah, how are things going? I'm winning. You can say that. It's it's a pop culture reference, but it's a, it expresses the same thing as uh, the sports idiom, a hot streak. If you're on a hot streak, that means uh, you're shooting and you're scoring and you're winning. Uh, it's the same idea. So sometimes we say you go cold, things don't go well, and if you're hot, things are going. They're ideal. Things are going very well. <clears throat> A team can be on a hot streak, a person can be on a hot streak, um, a business can be on a hot streak. Um, people tend to be fairly um, sensitive uh, to stock prices. You know, you're, you can be on a winning streak when you're buying stocks. Uh, gambling obviously is, um, you know, in Korea, it's illegal for Koreans to gamble at casinos except for, I think, Kangwondo maybe. And, and Jeju, there's certain designated places where you can gamble. Um, gambling is uh, a dangerous thing because it feels like when you're winning that you're invincible. And this is one of the side effects of feeling lucky, that there is actually no connection between your performance uh, and yourself, right? And when you're gambling and you're winning, that you shouldn't be winning because when you gamble, um, the casino, the house, always has the odds in their favor. So over time, you should lose. That's mathematics. 
that's how it works. They never make it so that you're supposed to. All of the customers, all of the clients, all the players in the casino, they are going to, over time, lose money. Otherwise, the casino will go out of business. So if you're going to be rational or skeptical about luck, then you shouldn't go to a casino. I've learned this already. You, when you go to a casino, overall, you lose money. And that's why the Korean government doesn't allow um, casinos and gambling in general. Uh, <clears throat> now, foreigners are different. We can go to casinos if we want to because they don't mind if we lose money, but they're protective of Korean citizens, which is, to be honest, I think a good idea. So gambling is one of those things. You shouldn't really rely on luck. You should rely on your effort and your skill and your talent. But nonetheless, it's gonna feel like sometimes things don't go your way and you're gonna attribute that, those events to luck. So <clears throat> here is sort of a checklist here um, on page 66. As I said, this is one a possible string of events that could happen um, that you could, you know, describe as Murphy's Law, or bad luck, or a rain cloud following you around, or a cold streak, or losing, losing um, things going against, you know, the grain. So this is the list. Uh, I missed a train, bus, or plane. That always sucks. That feels like it's not your fault, usually. But it probably is, because you were, uh, didn't give yourself enough extra time. Uh, I arrived late to work or school, an appointment. I lost money, keys, or my cell phone. These are all terrible things. Uh, I lost my job. My car or motorcycle broke down. My computer broke. Uh, I forgot somebody's birthday. My bicycle was stolen. I got sick. I had an argument with a friend. Uh, my pet ran away. Uh, or I broke up with my boyfriend or girlfriend. If that all happened to you in one week, that would be a, a hell of a week, we would say. Um, nobody is probably going to have all of those bad things happen to them within one day or one week. And if, you, if, if it has and you survived, then yes, you're, you're a very tough individual. <clears throat> so you have to be aware um, of two things grammatically when you're answering these questions. Uh, you have to be aware of these things we call the passive voice or the active voice, right? So it's the structure of the sentence. So when you're using the passive voice, as it says on 69, page 69, um, the passive voice is formed by the correct tense of the verb. So it's to be plus a past participle form of the verb. So when you use the passive voice, for example, um, the, 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 the subject of the sentence is um, acted upon rather than the subject of the sentence doing the acting. That's how a passive voice works. So a painting was stolen from the museum. This means that the action is happening to the subject. If the subject is doing the action, then it's the active voice. For example, a thief stole the painting from the museum. The thief is doing the action and that's the active voice. Pretty easy. Um, I know I don't talk about grammar that much, but every class I try to talk about the main grammar point that is useful for your answer. So keep this in mind. You can use the passive voice or the active voice. Um, this can change um, how the sentence is received, right? So, I, I mean, the reason they're talking about this in relation to good luck and bad luck is because uh, if it's bad luck, probably... The passive voice uh, is going to be more appropriate because you're going to you're going to be the subject and it's going to be happening to you, okay? Uh, for luck in general, if you use the active voice, whether it's good luck or bad luck, if you use the active voice, then you are the one doing the action, which means you're you're the one with agency, and you are the cause of something happening, okay? So you can answer the question how you like. You're going to talk about um, a time in your life. I'm going to leave it open to you. They, in this chapter, they do say a bad week. So I'm going to leave it open to you. It doesn't have to be a single day. 
in the conversation one class, they have to talk about one day, the best day or the, the worst day. I want you, because many of you have taken conversation one with me, remember this is a different question. It's the same topic, but it's a different question. So you have to talk to me about a, a period of time where things went really badly, all right? So you have to sort of relate this to what I said. Uh, Murphy's Law, a cold streak, whatever you want to call it, things going badly, um, things bad luck following you around, all right? I'm going to talk about, I'm going to give you an example. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to talk about my first year at Chungnam. Uh, obviously, I got hired here in 2009, 12 years ago, and that was a good thing. And things went pretty well for my first semester. Uh, and then they, the wheels started to come off, uh, as we say. Um, things started to go badly. And it didn't seem like any of it was my fault, necessarily. Um, but when they the things added up, it seemed like I was sort of a victim of bad luck. So this is my, it's actually 2010. And uh, by, by the end of 2010, things had turned around again. But the first semester of 2010 was definitely the worst time for me uh, I, I spent, I've spent in Korea. I've been here for 14 years and that was the worst uh, uh, six month period uh, I've had here. <clears throat> so this is what happened. I had a visa from my previous job and I got hired at Chungnam. So um, my visa, I thought, my permission, my visa to stay in Korea had reset for one year, which, which would make sense. I started in September and I had a visa already from January. So I thought my visa would be finished and then restart from September to September. However, it did not. Um, four months later, my visa ran out. My contract for work in Korea was valid until August, but my visa um, associated with my passport and my permission uh, to be in Korea working at all expired on January 1st. And I did not know this. So uh, two months in, in, the, in the winter vacation, about six weeks later, I just looked at my, my ID card and I noticed the date. And then I asked the secretary, is my visa expired? And she phoned immigration and she said, yes. And the immigration officer said, you have to come right now, uh, as soon as possible to fix that. Uh, so that was pretty scary. I was uh, temporary, uh, temporarily, uh, <clears throat> officially, you know, an illegal immigrant, not on purpose. Uh, so I've got it all sorted out and I had to pay a fine and I uh, fixed my visa, everything. But um, <clears throat> before, before I went to immigration to fix my visa, I lost my wallet. I was really upset, as I recall, about the whole thing. I was really worried. I wasn't trying to do something illegal. So I was sort of not paying attention. And I, I think I was running down the road. Uh, from the dormitory to the English department and I dropped my wallet and somebody picked it up and I've lost my wallet in Korea uh, more than once and somebody has returned it several times but this time somebody picked it up and didn't return it so I lost all of my ID yeah so then I had to get that replaced and then I had to go to immigration and get a new alien card which I did, <clears throat> and then I had to get a new driver's license. The last thing I needed was to get my new driver's license. So on the way to the uh, Ministry of Transportation, I lost my passport on the bus. I just left it on the bus. I don't know where it went. Somebody got it or it went in the garbage. Um, I got my driver's license renewed using my new alien card, but I lost my passport, which is much worse. So then I came home. Those three things happened all within one week. It's crazy. <clears throat> so um, 
I had to go and get my new passport and I had to explain that it's lost. It, they don't like to give you a new passport when you lose it because it's an important uh, document for identification. So my parents had to mail my birth certificate from Canada and then I had to take my birth certificate to Seoul. But between the beginning of the semester and the end of the semester, I ruptured my Achilles tendon and broke my leg. And I had to go in the hospital at the end of the semester for a week. And so I couldn't walk. I had one leg in a cast. Uh, so then I had to buy a car and I bought a used car. And then the first week I was out of the hospital, I drove to Seoul with my friend. He came with me to keep me company and um, comfort me. And I went to Seoul and uh, I got my passport replaced. And then it took me three months, you know, to get my leg healed. So by the end of 2010, uh, I could walk again and I had a passport and I had my wallet and I had a visa and everything was okay. <laughs> that was a pretty horrible um, first six months of 2010. I ended up going to Canada um, with a broken leg and uh, they do actually treat you very nice. That was sort of, I think, the turning point. I finally made it to summer vacation. I flew to Canada and the, the Korean air staff were so kind. They put me in a wheelchair and they pushed me around the airport. And uh, I had to, I got extra, I got a special seat that had extra leg, leg room. And I felt like things started to turn around at that point. But that's a pretty horrible, um, six months. So maybe that'll make you feel better. If, you, if your example isn't as bad as mine, hopefully it's not. Maybe that'll make you feel better if you want to talk about uh, a negative thing. Uh, that happened to me 11 years ago, so I can talk about it now. It's okay. Um, as I said, you can talk about uh, one of those weeks in a negative way. But if you want to talk about, if you want to give an example that's positive and explain to me your story, of, of a string of really fortunate things that happened to you, that's also possible, okay? It's your choice. If you want to talk about something uh, negative, bad luck, or something um, that's related to good luck, okay? So that's it. Um, we're done for the first half of the semester. I will do the midterm review next Sunday and I'll go over all the topics and the questions again. Remember, two questions out of six, and your answer should be two to three minutes long, um, and they should be complete, as I explained. Make sure uh, that you start with a statement, and then you explain and give examples and detail, and at the end, you sort of sum it up. And that was the worst six months of my life. Uh, if that's, I will know if you say something like that that that's the concluding sentence of your interview answer. And um, that will be a signal um, for the next question or that the interview is over. Okay, thank you everybody for um, watching again. And if you have any questions or concerns as usual, please send me an email. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend and I will see you on Zoom um, in real time on the screen in a week or two weeks depending on your group. Have a nice day.